quite excitement over in the high jump. And now we move to the steeplechase on the back straight. Uh, very sadly, El Bacali from Morocco, who would have started as the favourite, uh, didn't manage to get to the meeting here. Travel still an issue for many, many athletes, as it is for all of us, I guess. But we've still got a very good field indeed. That's for a pretty good pace as well, around 8.10, which I think in these conditions it would be very good indeed were they to achieve it. You saw there Bedrani, Bet could be what. Phil Norman, the British athlete who's had a, a massive improvement this year, or a, a very significant one, 8.20. Uh, his uh, daytime job is uh, checking telegraph poles. With, uh, hopefully the other athletes start to check him out here because... Matt Hughes, the Canadian, who's performed so well in major championships in recent years, knows that this is a very open race, I think. Hilary Ball, the American, who on his day can, oh, has produced the fast times in the past 8.08. I was watching him race uh, in the States a week or two ago. So I'm not sure that too many here will be ruling themselves out of running well here without El Bacali it becomes a very open race Kabeni <laughs> looks a little bit chilly on the inside the uh, American uh, actually he ran in the US marathon trials last February seems so long ago now uh, before everything came to a stop So, just over seven and a half laps of the track because the water jump is on the inside here at Gateshead. Uh, they'll miss that out on this first circuit. And their first barrier will be when they've completed the best part of 250 metres. So, they've gone off fairly slow. The pace, as I said, they were meant to be heading out at around uh, 242, 243 for the first 1,000 metres. I think, Tim, probably most of the guys will be happy just to have a bit of a race here today because... There are people looking for qualifying times, of course, there are, but tonight what is not going to be the opportunity really to achieve that. You don't want to set yourself out, particularly in the steeplechase. You don't well, want to be exposed out there in the front too long. No, you make a very good point, Steve. You know, we forget, of course, that these early races of the season, athletes are still looking for qualifying time so very frustrating perhaps these conditions for many of them but then while the pace makers were originally tasked before the race with uh, going out at around 806 to 810 tempo i think that's very optimistic in these conditions however i never ran a steam chase i don't think you ever ran a steam chase these are the tough guys of the track and uh, you know it's the only event where they enter the water on purpose so they should be pretty comfortable in these conditions let's see how they go said a non steeplechase um, actually I did do one when I was about 15 and uh, never again uh, yeah right these are the tough men of the track and uh, it's about technique as well and strength speed hopefully uh, towards the end and uh, as we've seen could be what leading the pack if you like bet close to him Kabeni on the inside Phil Norman really what a jump forward for him 820 you know, once you start running under 820 I mean uh, that's uh, British fans uh, and people around the world will I guess realize once you start running under 820 you really are going to put yourself right up there in the world class of course many uh, are running under eight minutes or fewer running under eight minutes certainly low eight minutes but nonetheless it's pretty good running and the Olympic qualifying at 822 that's one box ticked off for him so early stages Well, the Australian Ben Buckingham has uh, just gotten stretched out a little bit. He just picked it up a little bit on that last lap, and it's a pretty good piece of pace, mate, because he's kind of got the guys warmed up into it. 2.55, though, that's pretty slow through the first kilometre. In fact, it's very slow, um, but understandable, I guess, and that's why the most of the pack are finding this fairly comfortable at this stage. So he's leading. Could be what? Bet, ball. Pretty close. And I said Kabeni on the inside as well. And then a little gap. Although, the, as I said, everybody pretty much still in contention. What I do is just start to move up a little bit as uh, small gaps start to appear. I say the Spaniard the, uh, with the red shorts. Yeah, the opportunities, uh, Tim, you were saying about yeah, for all of the uh, athletes around the world, they're all looking for these opportunities to race and, the, and it's good that a lot of the federations and quite a lot of the meets are providing almost qualifying races for them this this obviously is one of those a diamond league race but 
Uh, normally this would be pretty quick, but I think this is smart running from the guys here today in these conditions. Well, and plenty of them will not have had many races under their belts anyway, so more often than not, the, in the, if you haven't raced much, your first couple of races out, you are a bit ring rusty, you don't feel great, and you, you have to work hard for modest times, and that certainly is likely to be the case for quite a few of these fellas here today. I mean, that first kilometre, 255, that is... Uh, way way off international standard running even for these conditions so at least they're beginning to pick it up now but i think we are going to see a rather tasty last couple of laps yeah it'd be interesting wouldn't it because uh, the pacemaker's got now ben buckingham stepped aside could be watts and uh ball just moving things along Pedrani staying pretty close as he always done well matt hughes is just watching affairs and then the British athlete we talked about before, just on the outside of the group there, uh, Phil Norman. And all this now starting to, as, as Tim was suggesting, sensing that this could really start to pick up because this is so slow. Bet a little hitch kick as he heads into that barrier to line himself up nicely. But it's uh, Nipres, who's come round the outside, the other Australian, James Nipres, that enough is enough. Let's get this going. Sometimes, Tim, you want a clear sight as well. You've, the, group, the group starts to bunch up a little bit. You, you're probably better either being near the front or at least get things stretched out, get a clear sight of those barriers. Absolutely right, yeah. I mean, if the conditions are going to be awful for everybody, no matter where you are in the pack, you might as well be near the front. And actually, as you say, getting a sight of those barriers, it means less hesitation, less stuttering in those last six or eight strides approaching the barrier. I'll be interested to see how Matt Hughes goes here. He's a much underrated Canadian, the 31-year-old. When you think that in the, the last three World Championships, or three of the last four World Championships, he's been sixth and sixth and eighth, and that's behind the usual numbers of Kenyans and uh, other great steeplechasers from East Africa. He is one of the best steeplechasers in the world outside of Africa, and he doesn't get that recognition because, of course, he's not getting near the medals. No, absolutely right. what just moving up on the outside. The Drani just tucked on the inside. And it's uh, Bet now who just starts to move things on a little bit. The Rebor still there as well. And finally, we just get a little bit of pace. There's a sense that the others are starting to look for positions as well. When a little further down, others beginning to feel the pace. But Drani just... Uh, Watching that little bit of a gap appear, those three just trying to stretch away and he quickly moves into fourth to go past the Australian to try and close it down. Well, uh, we talked about Hughes just now, down the home straight before that, uh, going through the finish line, he almost stumbled. He's in the white headband there, right in the middle of the pack. And as we said, Steve, if you don't get a good sight of those barriers, it can be really awkward. They're suddenly in front of you. But uh, it's beginning to stretch out a little bit now, as you say. Mark Hughes making a big move in the black and white of the Shaftesbury Club. And then on his inside, Matt Hughes, the Canadian. Phil Norman starting to come up on the outside of them as well. But it's Hillary Ball now leading from Bet. They've just got a lap to go this time. Pedrani looks tired. They all look pretty tired. And it's Hillary Ball in the front. Bet as Hughes now moves into third. The Canadian looking even stronger. Takes the bell. Still anyone's racist. Ball is struck hard and he's struck a long way out of here. Bet goes with him. Three, four metres between them and the pack now. Nice hurdling from both of the men at the front. And look at Mark Pierce. Well, he'd be happy if he can beat the other Brits in this as well, but it's Ball, the American, who's out in front. Pedrani trying to get moving as well. 200 metres left. One more water jump, but he's clear. Bet now starting to look behind. Nicely taken by Ball. Bet hurdles it. Loses a bit of momentum. Medrani into third place. But this is Hillary Ball clear on the way. One more look behind. One more barrier to take. Over it nicely. Just checks. No danger. Hillary Ball can celebrate. Little wave to the crowd. The time will be unimportant, really. It's the victory that matters for him. Ball wins it. Then Bet. Then Medrani. Then Pierce. Big run from him. Then the Spaniard comes in just to step behind him. And then. The others come through. Well, we said Tim that Tim's wouldn't be important. Times Tim's times times Tim <laughs> wouldn't be important. But I, th I thought the last uh, two three laps from him was pretty impressive. We know he can run quick, and he's he's getting you know he's represented the USA very 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 well indeed. But 
He'll be very pleased to get that victory today because he doesn't often get across the line first necessarily. No, absolutely, but uh, you're right. I mean, we, we were fairly sure that the first couple of kilometers would be slow and meandering in these difficult conditions. And Bohr had the legs there. He was so impressive over the last two or three hundred. I sort of get the feeling that however it had been run, uh, the former Canadian, former Kenyan, now American, would have won there pretty comfortably. Time to punch the air and celebrate down the home straight once he'd safely cleared that final barrier. A little glance over his shoulder there showed a 10 meter gap. And the rest of them stretched out there in what is almost a, a middle distance race type finish over the last 300 meters, just a big burn up. But uh, he was frankly almost class apart despite the times, 8.30.2. As you said rightly earlier, Steve, these times when seen on, the, on paper around the world without the conditions written alongside them won't look too impressive. But that's solid, particularly actually after such a desperately slow opening kilometer. Yeah, Tim, around about 2.42 last kilometre, but most of that was kind of the last six, 700 metres, wasn't it? Yeah, time to celebrate, and he had plenty to spare over the rest of the field. Oh, well done, Hillary Ball. Yeah, the rain's coming down, and uh, as Tim was mentioning, uh, that <laughs> we're going to get wet anyway in the water jump, but everybody getting a little bit of a drenching at the moment. Not the best conditions, but... Winning time, 8.30.2 for Ball, bet 8.31.52, some season's best for people there, but Mark Pierce, well done to him in these conditions, that's a personal best for the British athlete who finished in fourth place, 8.32.65.